morning, everybody. Uh, this is the December 1st meeting of the research committee, of the Raleigh Historic District Commission, and my dog is playing with some bells. So I'm sorry about that. Good morning. Morning. Looks like Ian's in the office today. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So this, um, we should get started because I know Tanya has to jump off. And then if David doesn't join us, which I hope he will, I invited him, um, then I will forward to everybody. So we do have someone who has joined us by phone. Um, I can okay. unmute and we'll figure out who that is. Okay. So our call in user, I'm gonna unmute you. All right, can you hear me? It's me. Oh, it's Tanya. Hi. I th I think I might be in two ways, but um Yes. I I'm mobile right now, so I just decided to call in. I'm sorry for the confusion. No problem at all. Um can you mute yourself as a call in user? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna be so muted. I'll let right you now. take control of yourself and um if there's anything you wanna add, feel free. Okay. And I'll probably just be quiet and then I'll just kind of disappear soon. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, so on our agenda, we, it's very light today. Um, we just have general updates for our current ongoing um, research activities, um, which uh, leader Tanya, Tanya with an A, um, if you want to update us on, I guess we can do both at once, both the African American and the LGBTQIA statement. Sure. Um, for the LGBTQIA plus historic context statement, the um, the online survey um, just closed, and we are taking that information plus all of the um, other information that we've received via email over this last month. Um, Aaron has been um, doing the, uh, the, the workhorse job of getting it all put into a spreadsheet that um, we will be sharing with um, Free Harris, um, our consultant, and he will start pulling it together. Um, and uh, that's really where we are. The, the next um, uh, really the next thing, sort of interesting thing that may happen will be the um, well. He'll start talking, um, you know, reaching out to some of the people that provided information to ask any questions. But then we'll um, develop a list of interviewees. And they will be done in sort of a, a WebEx or a Teams environment like this. And so it gets recorded um, both um, from an audio standpoint and visually. And that's really where we are on that one. So sort of the behind the scenes research work. And for the um, African American Historic Resources um, uh, Architectural Inventory. Um, that will be kicking off um, in a well, publicly kicking off at the first of the year after the after the holidays, but um, the contract um, should be executed by the end of the by the end of the month, and then the consultant will start on you know some of the background research and pulling together what work has already been done. Uh, the team met. Um, we met with um, the planning and development uh, communications uh, manager yesterday, no, Monday, Monday, and um, they are going to be drafting a, um, a plan uh, of, of ideas of what to do um, or a sequence of what to do for the communications of, the pro of, of that project. And um, we anticipate we'll be doing a similar online survey like we did for the LGBTQIA plus, you know, a place where people can drop 
things on the map, um, as well as put information, um, you know, in words. And of course, I can always email staff um, since we will also, in addition, so the within the broader, you know, city. Um, as a reminder, we're looking at um, civil rights history, um, uh, churches, um, entertainment venues, and um, properties um, built by African American architects or developers. And from the 1945 to 1975 time time frame. Um, so for that, we will probably have. Um, Flyers, I mean, we'll do social media pushes, but we'll probably have flyers that will be created to put up in the various community centers as well as libraries where people, you know, might be going and, and hear about the project. And for the Biltmore Hills neighborhood, um, that is where in there is a Biltmore Hills community center. And um, it's looking right now that we we don't have a date yet, but that we will do a combination in person and online um, kickoff. So um, actually, you know, in in the neighborhood, um, with the idea of connecting the um, consultant um, with the longtime residents in order to be able to, um, you know, speak with them, learn more, and there's also. Um, I don't have the, the project charter in front of me, but we're also going to, um, you know, work with the um, Office of Equity and Inclusion. Um, we also have the, there's a, a Office of Minority and Women-Owned Businesses, I think is what it's called. Um, and And then Anyway, what, once that is a little bit more coalesced, like we'll, we'll have something, we should have something for you at the January meeting. And um, there will also, within the contract, there is a, there will be very specified sort of um, deadlines for when, you know, certain parts of the project products are brought in. And so over the course of the next year, each month, we will have um, something for the research committee to look at um, and we'll give instructions on whether it's just a quick skim through or if it's something that um, a, a deep dive may be helpful. And um, we will also want to connect with you um, for sure, Susan. I know you had the names. Um, and you have probably already given them to me and they're deep in my email somewhere, but that you, you've made connections with, with people um, that we will want to share with our consultant as well. Um, because. I, um, I guess uh, kind of, I hope a quick question, Tanya. Um, yes. Yes. I, uh, the work is, is I'm very excited about it and I feel like it's um, a jumping off point for. Right. For all but I, I want to be on top of, or help our committee be on top of what we need to support that work or what we need to be thinking about. So I know lots of times you send us stuff and not everybody has time, but I, should we be putting on our agenda how we tend to approach finding, I mean, do, do, should, like at this date we should be reviewing or have the information yet, but there, distributing and producing information on these properties. And I want to be sure that the research committee begins to bring these properties up for historic landmarking purposes. And if you think we can't start doing that till the first stuff is done, I'm fine with that. I just kind of want to have a in our brains this the concrete, you've got to do it. And this me, you know, so maybe as you get further along with what they're going to deliver, we can as a committee say, this is what our commitment is based on the information. So I, I want the information to get utilized by us. And, right. Oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. And we're looking um, back at the fact that we don't have, you know, our surveys anymore and we're not, this could be our way of changing the dynamics of the research committee. So I'm hoping right. that we can support you 
that. Yeah, so so I will look, see, um, it will, I mean, we will start getting, uh, well, I'm trying to guess the order of things without looking at it. Um, yes, I will, you know, it, I will have a timeline of what we're going to receive and it's going to be like every month or every couple of months because it is a grant project. There is a very hard deadline. Um, I think it's September 2nd of 2022. So um, I think perhaps one of the first conversations that we have in, in, in January will be, you know, looking at this, what the schedule is and I, I think that you're probably going to want to wait until. Well, so what is going to happen? The 1st thing that's going to that you're going to see are the inventory, you know, just like property sheets, you know, well, electronic property sheets. So just, you know, data sheets with the name of a building and a little bit. You know, the, the written description and, you know, probably something you know, from the city directories on it. So just a little bit of information, but it will not be until you know probably late spring that there is a, you know, a written context to put the properties in. Um well, if and you could just give us a, a, a I mean a calendar of what you expect so we uh, can Yeah, yeah, right? we'll, we'll yes. Yes, that will okay. be we'll can have that spelled out. Okay, thank you. That's great. Okay. okay. And I think that's the only update on that other than I can't remember if we said the, the consultant selected is Hanbury preservation um, consultants with the primary researcher being very rough at Hanbury. Um, and uh, Thank you. she sure. uh, is local from Raleigh and she has done um, work in some of the African American communities all you know, all already, and she has some of her own connections, and then plus, plus your connections. So it's going to be a great project. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Sounds wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Um. Our next on our agenda is the Legan House, which I know that there have been a flurry of emails over the last few weeks. Um. So I figured it, we should add it to the agenda since it seemed like. Um, definitely something that you all want to discuss and maybe move forward on. So I don't know if Ian, if you're the best person to share an update or a summary um, of what has happened. Summary of what's happened. Um, I noticed uh, what was it two weeks ago that it was for sale, um, and I did a post on it on Old Raleigh. Uh, somebody from the NNO saw the post, did another story on it. Then they asked me to write an op-ed on it, did that. It's this, the sale of the house is pending as of now. Um, I'm not sure, I don't know when it's gonna close, but um, I've heard Matthew Brown told me that um, the person who is under contract promises to restore the house and not tear it down. So, I don't know. Yeah. What they say they're going to do and what they do is, I don't um, know. Uh, do you know, has someone been, has the house been vacant or has someone been residing in it? If we were to send a letter, would it be better to wait until the property closes or just yes. to send it to current resident? Yeah, I would, I would send it to uh, the new owner. Um, house has been vacant as as far as I can tell since before 2005 so it's been a very long time yeah so I've got the same information from Matthew I, I sent him a note so yeah. um, know that people are paying attention I agree with you probably have to wait um, <laughs> David did some really good work on it, on the history of it, which only reinforces the fact that it'd be great to preserve it. So, um, and then the other two properties that were there, I guess, were torn down. So, hopefully Who's we can this, preserve uh, this one. 
Susan, who's David? David is uh, David Sechner, who we've invited to join us. He's uh -huh. um, he's a uh, who was it? Someone on our, uh, on the. Do you remember Colette or Tanya who told us to get in touch with David originally? I believe it was Katie. Oh, I think so. Yeah, you're right. So Katie sent David a note and he wrote back and then I invited him to join this committee as a, um, you know, not a, an appointed person, but as a volunteer for the committee. And he's okay. already done some pretty interesting work. I'll, I'll send you what I've got. You'll really like him. I mean, this is his whole. He puts it together in a very logical, structured way, and he does a lot of really wonderful research. And, he works um, at the state library, right? Yeah, I think that's state. Right. Yeah, because yeah, I sent you all his bio and everything. Um, so I'll try and send this over to you. Once we get off the call, or I'll try and send it. He sent it to this stuff he had done. He sent to Katie and I, and I think you, Tanya, didn't he? Did he send it to you too? Let me see. I don't think so. I have the original email. Two more. Let's see. Um, I guess he sent it to um, Katie and me and somebody else who I don't recognize. But anyway, I'll. I'll. It's. Um, I asked him to send it to everybody, but obviously it didn't happen. So I will go ahead and do that when we get off the call. It's hard to figure out on my phone, but I will do it. And then I think he. Press to research on zoning and the properties that are being rezoned in Raleigh, and then research on the Ligon House. And um, both I thought were very applicable to what we do and who we are. And um, hopefully, he'll be joining us on these calls. I sent him the um, instructions uh, when Colette sent them to me, but I haven't heard from him, so maybe he's just tied up. But he's someone who should definitely. Um, at some point to join this committee officially because he really cares and is doing some great work. So Serksner is is his last name. I, I found the email he sent. Um, yeah, I'm still unmuted. So he's a living historian and researcher that focuses primarily on the colonial and early federal periods in North Carolina. Um, uh, he created, the, he's the secretary treasurer for the newly formed um, Alston House Associates for the House and the Horseshoe State Historic Site. And um, he's been employed, yeah, by the NC State Library since 97. And um, he's transcribing Alston's um, governor's letter books for the NC archives. Oh, the life of David Stone, 15th governor of North Carolina. And he's um, doing some transcriptions of that book. So where'd you go? There it is. That's, so, great. That, that's it. And then I'll send you the recent research that he's done. I'll send it to everyone on the committee. I didn't want to intervene and I thought he should send it, but I think Ian, you'll really appreciate it. So we'll send it. Okay. So, so, so just, just I can wait. I mean, that's a wait and see kind of thing, right? So I have a suggestion for the the letter when it gets sent. That I would, um, I mean, I would include, you know, the little whatever blurb that we have written up on the house, or maybe, um, you know, uh, Ian's op-ed or or something. So rather than just the standard letter, include. And this is why we think the building's important to go along with it to hopefully um, help keep the owner's interest. It's a great idea. So when it closes, I think Ian's op ed would be wonderful to send. Um, but I don't think, I mean, Matthew's been in touch with him. We can, I can reach out to Matthew again once it closes and see where we're at too. Did he give you any uh, details on the, this person? None. What he just said to me he had been in touch and they were going to stick with it. And I, you know, and I said I get back to him and bug him more, which I'm sure he expects. So.
And I also brought it up because, you know, we're the, the little rally group, which he's very involved in is trying to historic house and move it, which I uh, brought up Tanya. I guess he, he spoke with you about it or they spoke with you about it or. Um, uh, uh, Chris crew spoke with you about a house that. The SPHO was trying to purchase and move to a property that the city owns. And, um. I said, we hadn't talked about it in our research committee. We get houses fairly that are important houses to preserve. That I would think if we're going to buy a house, maybe we want to, <laughs> we could have bought the Ligon house. I mean, I, anyway, so I don't know that much. This house, Matthew says it's stunning and we should preserve it and move it. So that's all. Which house is it? I don't know. Tanya, do you know which house it is? It's, um. I want to say Royster. Royster, is that right? Yeah, that's it. Matthew told me about this. It's on Boylan. Yeah, that's so. that's it. So it's um, I don't know that it's our responsibility to do that as an SPHO, but we're looking at doing it, and we don't have the funds, so we have to get partners and stuff. So, I mean, I think there yeah. are probably other organizations like this one here in Oakwood that are designed to help preserve historic places and maybe we can get them involved. You know, Ligon would have been a great place for us to look at, I think, but. SPHO has, um, has done it before, has purchased a house and moved it and, and then sold it. There's one on Linden in the 100 block of Linden. And that was done mm -hmm. like early 2000s, um, shortly before I got here. I've just been on this, the house on, on Boylan. I've just been, you know, facilitating. I've been the connection <clears throat> with, um, with Chris and the, um, the, the property owner, um, the department that owns the, the lot. So I've been just sort of a helping connect the dots and, yeah, I, I think it's, a, I mean, it's really interesting. It's just outside our price range because the city is certainly properties and homes have gone up. Um, I just wish that, you know, we would work closer um, with the SPHO so that when we're, and it happens that I'm doing both, so I hear both, but I just like, okay, you, I, I sit and listen in these meetings and there's lots of interesting properties properties that I think would be unique for us to purchase and preserve if we're going to do something like that. But this PHO area and it's being moved outside the SPHO area. So I'm a little confused. But anyway, thank you for your help on it, time And we'll see where it goes. Okay, next. Anything else on that? All right, I'll send everybody the stuff David's done on the living house and what else is on our agenda, Colette, or is, or is that 809? Is this a new record? That was it. Okay. All right. Anybody have anything else they want to bring up? We all had too much turkey and we're still in a turkey fog. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you all. I won't tie you up any longer and um, keep sending those Christmas or those, what is it? The anniversary party suggestions. I think they're very funny and cute. So hopefully we'll get some good solutions for the official anniversary party. And maybe next year we'll all meet in person. That'd be so nice. Okay, thank you all very much. Anything else? Nothing? Okay, we're done. Bye everybody. Thank you.